Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to I'd Rather Be Making. And today I'm fixing a problem that my last make created. I made one of the Voronoi lamps as a gift for my daughter. When she got home and started using the lamp, she noticed the remote interfered with her television. I thought, this is a simple lamp. What are the odds of that happening? Approximately 3,720 to what? Thanks for that 3PO, but it might not be as uncommon as you would think. Doing a quick search on the internet reveals there are quite a few people complaining of similar problems. I think the more likely issue is interference with the same device. There are a lot of devices out there, a lot of LED lamps and so forth, that use the exact same control as you can see here. And this is the one I picked. I thought I would see if the lamp remote had some way of selecting a different instruction set, like changing a channel if you will. Although technically it wouldn't be a different channel, it would just be a different set of instructions. Let's see if we can open up the remote and find a switch or something. Hey, that's a neat way to integrate a plastic spring. I'll have to keep that in mind. And I don't think I can open it up without breaking it. Okay, if I can't change the channel that it's on, then I might be able to collimate the beam. The infrared light coming out of the remote comes out at some angle depending on the LED used. Looking at some data sheets for a couple of LEDs, this LED still has 30% of its energy 40 degrees off center, which means a window of 80 degrees, so it's more like a floodlight than a spotlight. We want something with more spotlight control, so we will activate the devices that we're actually pointing at and not practically everything in the room. Let's see what we can find on the manufacturer's website. Doesn't look like there's any instructions. Well, there's your problem. 120 degree angle, wow. That has an advantage where you could activate your device without necessarily pointing directly at it, but we don't want that in this case. Let's jump in Fusion 360 and design our collimator. The collimator is gonna have a barrel that lets the light pass through it. The way we control the light, our design controls, is the height of this barrel and its width, or the opening, see there. So another barrel with the same height, but half the width, will have a narrower light cone that could pass through it, as you can see here. I want a light cone from the remote to go from 120 degrees down to 20 degrees. The way I do this is to have the light pass through a barrel that is three millimeters wide at the opening and 16.5 millimeters long. That'll make an angle of 20 degrees. Here's a light cone of 120 degrees. See there. Now here's our 20 degree light cone. Let's measure that. That's much better. That'll be basically a spotlight in comparison to what we had before. Let's sketch out this design first. Get some measurements. Yeah, I'm thinking and slide in something to cover the top of it. Don't want to cover the buttons though, so let's see where that should stop. Put the barrel on. Alright, let's see how wide we go. It'll be the bottom part, but we got to relieve the buttons there. Here's our barrel. Need support, it'll break right off. So, something on the side, or I think the rounded nose looks better. A little Art Deco look to it. That'll be strong. Measurements. How far down this can go and not cover buttons. Another part will be further reach. And how thick is it? There we go. Where is that LED? That's where everything functions and comes together. Got it. Let's go design it in CAD. I basically start off modeling a rectangle that I extrude into a box and hollow out. I want the design to slide over the remote so that it doesn't need to be glued in place. Hopefully a friction fit will be good enough. Here you can see the geometry. This is what gives our barrel the ability to take a 120 degree floodlight and turn it into a 20 degree spotlight. This is what we're wanting. Let's round off these edges since a person's going to be handling it. We don't want any sharp edges. Let's save it and get our STL file and go print. I printed it with supports and 100% infill. I printed this on my CR10 Creality Pro with black PLA. It printed flawlessly. Okay, time to check it and see how well it did. It looks like what I designed. Not so bad. It fits perfectly.
perfectly. Nice and snug. It's not shaking off. Slides right off. That's not going to need glue. There's little dimples here. There's the ridges here from printing. They slide in together. That was a bonus. Nice. Now I want to reproduce the problem as best as I can. I don't have a TV with an interference problem like my daughter has. So to simulate that, I'll get a second lamp. The remote is definitely controlling both devices at the same time. Here I'm going to try to only activate the one on the left, yet both are being activated. Let's point at the right, and the left is also activated. So this effectively reproduces the problem she's seeing. Now let's try the fix, and it works. Very pinpoint control, almost like a laser can individually control them. Perfect. That's what I wanted. This should solve the issue she's having. Not having any interference between these two devices, even though they are using the exact control set. I hope you enjoyed this project. I had fun doing it. If so, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. Now let's take this test a bit further. Put the lamp side by side. Ooh, and we've got good control. Look at that. Individually turn them on and off. It is almost like turning this into a laser pointer. Pretty happy with it. If you can think of other uses for this, please leave a comment and share your ideas with the rest of us. Okay, project update. Success! I gave the collimator to my daughter and she says it fixed the problem. Now when she turns her lamp on and off, her TV doesn't shut off. And thanks again for watching. Until next time, keep making!